Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. It is your boys from BPAL Picks. I am B, and this is Pal, and we're going to bring you two games that are now scheduled for Thanksgiving Day, um, and we're going to bring you the picks that are going to be shared to you by Capper Comparison Picks. Go check him out over on YouTube. He does some great stuff comparing a bunch of different Capper's picks so you guys can pick from a pretty sum and pick which people you want to pick from, and we're hoping it will be ours, of course. But we're going to give you our opinions on the two games that are happening tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day, and a happy Thanksgiving to everybody as well. But first, I will say, uh, Pirlo, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well. We're good. We're having what we call a warm winter here in Edmonton so far this year, and uh, keeping above zero degrees Celsius, if, it's, if that makes sense to people out there, but. Uh, um, which is about 35, I think, and that's good for us. So we're very yeah. happy that way. Yeah. There's snow melting. There's nothing wrong with that. No, that's for sure. Um, we have some news, of course. The uh, nightcap was supposed to be the best game between the 6-4 and four Ravens to the 10-0, and 0, only undefeated remaining team. Steelers, that game is now going to be moved to Sunday due to positive COVID tests within the Ravens organization. Eric Ebron was not too happy about that, uh, as you can see from his tweet on Twitter, if you check that out. But the, it's the right decision. They had some positive COVID tests. It's better to play it safe than sorry, especially uh, the Ravens have key guys in J.K. Dobbins and Ingram, who still won't be able to play on Sunday, but... Again, better to play it safe and sorry, and we wish those guys well and a quick, uh, speedy recovery. Um, but we will get into the first game, which as of now is still scheduled for 12.30 p.m. Note that, of course, some of these game times could change due to the fact that the other game was canceled. They could move the time. But that is the Houston Texans against the Detroit Lions, two very disappointing underperforming teams like i was saying before the video you have the 31st ranked total yardage defense against the 28th uh which the 31st is the texans to the 28th of the lions the 22nd in allowing passing yards to the 25th again the uh, texans are always going to be the first team i'm saying and then the 32nd in rushing yards to the 30th the 23rd to the 28th in allowing points, and the 28th to the 25th on third down. So both of these teams are absolutely abysmal defenses. Um, so you would think they should be able to score and rack up a good amount of points. The problem is both of these teams are tied for 22nd in points. So this is either going to be a game that the offense is because they have two good quarterbacks into Sean Watson – and Stafford are able to actually pick up an offense and you have a good offensive game on these two bad defenses, or it's just really boring. But uh, that's kind of the synopsis of the whole game. Uh, I would say in this game, because of all those numbers being equally as putrid for both teams, I'm going to take Deshaun Watson pulling it out in the end over. It's not necessarily over Matthew Stafford. He has a lot of game-winning drives. It's just Deshaun can obviously do more to pull it out. He can run. He can throw it on the run. Like, he can create more plays than Stafford just has the ability to do as more of a pocket guy. So I feel like in the end, if it comes down to one of the two quarterbacks, uh, Deshaun will be the guy to pull the um, magic out of his hat and get it done. Um, and they'll be able to win that game. I wouldn't even know where to go with the total, though, because like I said, two terrible defenses uh and two terrible offenses so who knows what's going to happen i wouldn't know if that's going to be an over or under uh but what do you think of this game uh i'm with you i mean on paper like uh, the lions are probably the more disappointing team really um i i've seen the texans actually play with a lot of heart where the lions don't even look like they gave up the ghosts a long time ago they look like they don't even care anymore it's it's horrible football to watch them play i i think the texans will win i agree with you and um since i'm gonna i put a lean on this i mean i certainly wouldn't give it to our patreon customers but i'm leaning the under because i really just think detroit's mailed it in i think te the texans are going to have more most of the scoring but the lions just 
won't have enough offense to do anything, even against a weak Texans team. So it's 51 and a half. That seems a little high to me. I think it'll be something like 21 or, you know, 27 to 7 or something like that. Like, I really think the Detroit Lions are, are putrid, putrid team. Yeah, um, I would probably lean the under if I had to. But like I said, both of these teams allow a lot of yardage on defense. So if there's a game that you're going to get your offense going, it would be this yeah. one where it would just be a shootout situation potentially. Awesome. Um, so that's why I'm not perfectly comfortable picking one way. If I had to lean, yeah. I would probably lean under. It's like if I had to lean for the spread – I would think they would cover a three-point spread if they win the game. Yeah. Um, but if it turns into a shootout, they might not. So that's more of a lean. I still probably wouldn't give that to our uh, Patreons as a pick. Well, I, I put this pick out there for TikTok uh, because they're, I give them the most difficult ticks, and I get ribbed on it quite a bit because I'm, I'm, I'm only running about 60% or something like that. But they're games that I would normally totally fade. And I'm giving the pick out for free. And I took the Texans to cover and the under. But like you said, I'm probably fading this game altogether because I, I maybe not the Texans. I really think the Texans will win. But I definitely the, the total is who knows between these two teams what could happen, really. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. And then we move into, which is now scheduled for 4.30, could end up becoming our night game if they change the time. The Washington football team, who's 3-7, and seven, against the Dallas Cowboys, who are also 3-7 and seven, and in second place. Great place to be at 3-7. and seven. Um, <laughs> So uh, you have these two teams that have two good running backs, obviously, in Gibson, um, and you got Elliott and then McKissick's another guy that's a pretty good cat on the uh, Washington football team. Uh, these teams are pretty different. Offensively, the Cowboys are very good in total yardage. They're fourth. The Washington's all the way down at 27. Passing yards, they're also in the top 10 at 7th. Washington's all the way down at 24th. They're in the top 15 at 13th in rushing, rushing yards because Washington uh, – has more passing featuring backs with rushing. They're at 24th. In points, they're both below 20th or below. Cowboys are at 20th in points per game. And Washington's at 29th. And then in third down a percentage on offense, 18th and 26th. So the Cowboys' offense is definitely, as you can see by those numbers, which makes sense with the weapons they have, far superior than the Washington football teams. Though in defense, that flips. The Cowboys' total yardage on defense is 23rd, 14th in passing yards, 31st in rushing yard, 32nd in points, and 29th on third down percentage. To the Washington team, that is all other than rushing yards in the top 10. Rushing yards, they're 18th. Other than rushing yards, uh, in total yards, they're seventh in the league in giving up on defense, which is really good. They're first in passing yards. They, only, they give up less than 200 per game. Uh, they're 22.7 uh, points is ninth, and 38.6% on third down for defense is also ninth. So uh, this is like a what's going to happen on the seesaw type game because you have Dallas, who has a much better offense than Washington, but you have Washington, who has a much better statistical defense than Dallas. So what's going to show up? Is Andy Dalton and the Cowboys going to be able to play up on Washington? Or is Washington's defense going to be too brutal for the Cowboys team? Sorry for the dog bark in the background here. But uh, getting uh, all um, up in their quarterback and really not being able to um, create anything because – Washington football team just supplies too much pressure against Dalton and Ezekiel Elk. What do you think is going to happen in uh, this game? Um, Washington has played a lot better as of late. Uh, they have been playing like a team with pride, which is great. But I really like Dalton last game he played. And uh, he's, he's he really impressed me. You mentioned before, like uh, – 
that Dalton is a lot better quarterback than people give him credit for, and he sure showed it last game. Um, so, as far as the total is concerned, you just gave the numbers. It looks like the total could be anything there. Uh, but I just think the Cowboys will, will win based on uh, Washington's better defense, but not really great, uh, like fairly average defense as well and uh dalton playing i think he's going to continue playing the way he did you you got me a believer in dalton yeah i think the biggest issue for why i would say their defense this year is probably performed other than in rushing yards a tad above average but um the uh yeah but um the issue with them is they haven't won at all yet on the road all three of their wins are in washington so I don't foresee them winning in G World in Dallas. Uh, so that's why also I will take the Cowboys in this, as I think my dog's also taking the Cowboys, as she's emphatically letting everyone know. Um, so I think this game will cover the spread because Dallas's offense is dynamic, so they'll probably be able to win by more than three points. Uh, so I will say this game will cover the spread. And the Cowboys will be able to take it home and beat the Washington football team. But uh, as you would say, Pirlo, that is our full 42 as we cover the two games for Thanksgiving Day. We wish everybody to have a great and happy Thanksgiving. We're thankful for, of course, uh, our families on Thanksgiving, but also the great many, the two great football games now, not necessarily many. Uh, so everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been BPAL Picks, free NFL Picks of the Week. For Capper comparison picks, again, definitely check him out on YouTube. Doing some great stuff over there. Uh, have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone. Peace out.